Hello, my name is Mike Ranieri, and this is the first of a three-part series on OData and CSDL. This part is an introduction to CSDL. CSDL stands for Common Schema Definition Language. It is a schema format defined by OData to standardize how data elements are represented in a RESTful service. The intent of this is to provide a mechanism for clients to dynamically scan and adapt to a service's data model, and it provides documentation for developers when writing purpose-built clients. CSDL files are written, written in XML, and the XML structures define the JSON properties and objects that a service uses in its payloads, as well as define constraints that may apply. Inline annotations are used to provide clients and users with more detailed information about a given property or object. The CSDL specification can be found on the OASIS website at the given link. A schema file following the CSDL format can be broken down into two sections. The primary body of a schema file contains the namespace definitions. A namespace is a unique name for a set of type definitions being declared by the schema file. It is possible to define multiple namespaces in a single file. Namespaces within the same schema file may reference each other. Type definitions are referenced as namespace dot type definition. If a schema file requires references to namespaces defined in other schema files, then a reference to the namespace must be included. The reference includes the URI of the schema file being referenced in addition to which namespaces in the schema file to include. These references are normally done at the top of the file. Primitive types in the EDM namespace do not need to be included. These are common data types such as strings, integers, and booleans. In this schema file example, it opens and closes with the EDMX tag. It also includes a reference to an external schema file called externalschema.xml from the Contoso website. Within that file, it's referencing two namespaces, external namespace and other dot namespace. The namespace definitions are found between the data services tags. The schema tags define the namespace, my new namespace. In this example, since there is only one set of schema tags, only one namespace is defined. Within the namespace, a complex type is defined called my data type. That complex type contains three properties. My property, which has an underlying type of external namespace dot reference data type. My property two, which has an underlying type of other dot namespace dot other data type. And my property three, which has an underlying type of edm.in64. The definitions for reference data type and other data type will be found in external schema.xml since they are referencing external namespaces. edm.in64 is simply a 64-bit integer. In the following slides, we'll go over each of the constructs that can be found inside the schema body in detail. A property element is used to define a property inside of a JSON object. It provides the string name of a property and the data type of the property. In this CSDL example, a property named serial number is defined and its data type is set to edm.string, which is the primitive string type. From this, we'd expect to see a property somewhere in the JSON body from a service named serial number and its data will be a string. In this example, the data returned by the service is the string 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A navigation property element is used to define a property inside of a JSON object that links to another resource in the service. It provides the string name of the property and the data type of the resource it links. In this CSDL example, a navigation property named thermal is defined and its data type is set to thermal.thermal. .thermal. From this, we'd expect to see a property somewhere in the JSON body from the service named thermal, and its data will be an object uh, containing the link to the appropriate resource. The OData convention for these objects is to contain a single property named at odata.id, and the value of the property is the URI of the resource. In this example, 
The thermal property reported by the service is an object that contains the URI Redfish V1 Chassis 1 Thermal. An enum type is used to define a set of strings that show valid values of a given property. Each member defined is a valid value for a given enum. An enum type is, a, is given a name so that it can be referenced by properties that will be using the data type and a set of members which also have string names. In this CSDL example, we defined an enum type called indicator LED and it contains three members, lit, blinking, and off. In some other portion of the schema file, a property is defined that references this enum. In this case, we defined a property named indicator LED, and the data type is set to resource.v110.indicatorLED. This means that when a service returns the property indicator LED in its response, it can only use the string values lit, blinking, and off. A complex type defines an object with a set of properties. It can contain any number of properties or navigation properties. A complex type is given a string name so that it can be referenced by properties that will be using this data type. In this CSDL example, we define a complex type called processor ID, and it contains the properties vendor ID, identification registers, effective family, effective model, step, and microcode info. In some other portion of the schema file, we define a property named processor ID, and the data type is set to processor.v100.processorid. The JSON payload for a service that implements the schema would contain the property processor ID, and its value would be an object that contains the properties vendor ID, identification registers, effective family, effective model, step, and microcode info, all of which contain strings for their data. An entity type defines an object with a set of properties and a uniquely identifiable key. It can contain any number of properties or navigation properties. Entity types are used to define payloads for an entire resource. An entity type is given a string name so that it can be referenced by navigation properties that will be using the data type. An entity type also contains a key definition, which is used when working with sets of entities of the same type. The key can be thought of as an index in a collection of entities. In this CSDL example, we defined an entity type called processor, and it contains the properties ID, name, max speed megahertz, and total cores. The property ID is also flagged to be the key for this type of entity. The JSON payload for a service that implements the processor entity would contain the properties ID, name, max speed megahertz, and total cores. In this case, the property ID has the string value CPU0, the property name has a string value processor and socket 0, the property max speed megahertz has the value 2000, and the property total cores has the value 16. An action defines an operation that a client can perform by submitting a post request to the action URI. A service advertises the supported actions on a resource as part of the response to a GET request for the given resource. An action is given a string name and a set of parameters. In this CSDL example, we define an action named RESET, and it contains two parameters, manager and reset type. As a matter of convention, all actions used in Redfish use the isBound facet, which requires a binding parameter to be specified. This parameter is ultimately not sent by the client itself. In this case, manager is our binding parameter, so the client only needs to provide the reset type. The JSON payload for a service that supports actions on a given resource will have a property called actions. The properties within the object will be each of the actions supported on the resource. In this case, we see the action manager.reset which provides the target URI for the client and provides information about the reset type parameter. From this, if a client wanted to perform a reset of this manager, it would post to redfish v1 managers1 
actions manager dot reset and it, and it would provide a JSON object with the property reset type. The reset type property from, from the client could contain the string values on, force off, graceful shutdown, graceful restart, force off, restart, or force on. An annotation is used to provide inline documentation for anything defined in the schema. Annotations give guidance and or express conformance rules for clients or services. Annotations contain a term, term name and a value for the annotation. The value type can vary based on the term being used. In this CSDL example, we have three annotations for the property username. The first annotation is the term redfish.required on create. For this term, no value is provided. This can be okay since terms can be defined with a default value. If we were to look up the definition for this term, it would tell us that if a client were to create a new resource that has this property, it must be part of the post request when creating the new resource. The second annotation is the term odata.permissions. And since its underlying type is an enum, it has the enum member set to the appropriate enumerated value, which in this case is odata.permissions slash read write. This term tells that the client is allowed to both read and write this property. The third annotation is the term odata.description, which contains the string description of the property. CSDL allows for some data types to inherit from one another. Both entity type and complex type definitions can define a base type value. The value for the base type is the name of the entity type or the complex type in which the new type is, is referencing. Complex types can only inherit from other complex types, and entity types can only inherit from other entity types. All properties defined in the base type become available in the newly defined type. In this CSDL example, we define a complex type named protocol, which contains the properties protocol enabled and port. Later, if we wanted to extend upon that definition, we created a new complex type called SSD protocol, which defines its base type to be network manager protocol dot v100 dot protocol. This complex type contains the properties notify multicast interval seconds and notify TTL. However, since its base type uh, is protocol, it also contains the properties protocol enabled and port. That's all for the introduction to CSDL. For more information, you can reference the Redfish Standards page, the Redfish Developer Hub, or get involved and join the SPMF. Thank you for watching.